we are preparing for Kartik Brata. Yesterday we came to know that Krishna is supreme redeemer. Even a glimpse of his holy name can destroy all sins and can give liberation. And if one will chant pure name for the satisfaction of Krishna, then he will get prema. And that prema is in gradual procedure, which is narrated in Shikastaka, different stages of prema. And on the fifth verse, that is Asakti, one will start Raganuga Sadhan and realize in bhav and more in prema and how means first to practice shikastaka verse first then second like this and each this shikastaka will also in purified heart will reveal one of the eight lila periods of radha krishna So then yesterday I read one verse, it is the translation from one verse of Hari Bhakti Vilas by Sanatam Gusami. Yesterday already I read, so translation goes. A pure devotee who has got one pointed devotion to Lord has got liking only to perform devotion of chanting and remembering Shri Krishna. He cannot be persuaded to change his taste to any other form of devotion. They serve Krishna with delightful relation of love. According to their delightful relation, there is inspiration of gradual development of love. Devoted devotees, all actions are inspired by pure love originating from delightful relation. So one who realized his Siddha Deho or his Swarup in relation to Radha Krishna, he's having that love relation. Such devotee, he likes to do these two type of devotion, singing the glories of Krishna Kirtan and remembering him. Because already he's realized, so it is constant revelation is coming from Kirtan and automatically remembrance is coming. Prabhupada told, Kirtana Prabhave Smarana Hoive, Sei Kale Nirjon Bhajan Sambhav. By the power of Kirtan, offenseless Kirtan, Smaran will be automatic, all revelations will come. So such devotee has this particular liking for chanting and those who have not yet attained they have to do those 64 kinds of devotion or as per guru's instruction according to their circumstance they have to do but when one will come to that point mostly outwardly he will chant harinam and inside he will in his Sarup, he will assist Radharani in the Lila. But if one is not on that level, then he has to do according to order of Guru. Has to go to market, has to cut vegetables, has to all things to engage all his senses in the service of Krishna according to necessity and circumstance and level and what kind of attachments that devotee has, that has to be engaged. So bona fide guru will know how to engage. So, but this pure devotee is already realized, so directly tasting that. So, kirtan and smaran. Such devotee's action may seem to be against regulated devotion, persuaded by reverence, 
but the purpose of service to satisfy the object to worship is preserved in Raga Bhakti. Sometimes it seems outwardly like in Vaidhi Bhakti with open reverence there is a one seva apparat, one activity which is not pleasing to Krishna, to offer him some remnants. Someone already ate and you offer the remnant to Krishna. Or if dog saw bhoga offering and you offer that to Krishna, that is also seva apparat. Will not be pleasing or like so many things. But we see in Brajadham, cowherd boys, they will first taste the fruit, whether it is sweet or sour or bitter or what. And when they will see it is sweet, then they will give to Krishna. So outwardly looks like they are against regulated devotion. But the point is that in Raga Bhakti, the target to satisfy Krishna is there. So the purpose of devotion is to satisfy Krishna. So that purpose is not lost in Raga Bhakti, although outwardly it may seem that it is against, but it is not. It is only on different levels. Like Vaidhi, one who is eligible for Vaidhi Bhakti, he has to follow those rules and regulations to gradually engage himself fully for the service of Krishna and to give up all anartha, saparadas and everything. When he will get perfection in that, means purification of heart and that uh, natural love for Krishna will be awakened, then he will enter into Ragamarg. Vidi Marga Rata Jane Swadinata Ratna Dane Ragamarge Korano Pravesh. Bhakti no Thakuru. One song. One is following Vaidhi Bhakti. And when getting accomplishment, then he will get release from all those rules and regulations because he will enter into Raga Mark. Their purpose is the same, to satisfy Krishna. But that is more intimate. So cowherd boys, they are not tasting that for their own enjoyment. They are actually really trying for the satisfaction of Krishna, they want to. But those who are in an artisan like this, they are not allowed to do this. So, such devotees' actions, means Raga Bhakta, Brajavasi, such devotees' actions may seem to be against regulated devotion. Seem. But the purpose of service to satisfy the object of worship is preserved in Raga Bhakti. So we should, that is why when Bhangshidas Babaji Maharaj was doing bhajan in Navadip, he was in the mood of Avadhut. He did not, uh, and or, or in the mood of Paramahamsa. He was not considering about this word, the, all these things. And he was on the top low, topmost platform of transcendental series of Krishna Raga Mark. Prabhupachila Bhakti Sanasarastakur, he could detect that, notice that, and he would worship him. But he did not allow his disciples to go near him. He told them he is a pure devotee, but you have to give Dandavat from distance. Don't, don't go close to him. Why he said? Because they may misunderstand certain his actions which he may do for the satisfaction of Krishna, but it will seem to us that it is against rules and regulations which we are to follow now. So we may then judge why he is not following this, why he is smoking that hookah pipe that is prohibited, no intoxication. But we don't know why he is doing that, or other things also. So we may judge and we will commit offense, improperly judge. But, so Raga devotee, whatever he will do, all his actions, they will be inspired by love of Krishna, so he cannot do anything wrong. But it may seem to us, Vaidhi. But the problem is, if someone who is not on a Raga mark, and he says, 
no, I don't. Uh, this rules and regular, this is all useless. This is not, it has nothing to do with love and all this. And he's doing some immoral activities or something, then uh, that will not help him because he's not on that level and he cannot progress. And real devotees, they will detect that thing. That is why Prabhupada also, he could see these Sahajiyas and these, in the name of Radha Krishna love, they were doing many things, but they were actually doing immoral activities. They were not on that platform of pure love, only outwardly like Babaji and like this, but not pure on that platform. So Gurudev told, we have to be surrendered to Krishna. By His grace, we can detect who is a real devotee or how much devotion one has, Krishna will show. By external judgment, we cannot uh, get the real picture. Only by revelation of Krishna, then we have to give due respect or we have to avoid the association of certain cheaters, hypocrites, we have to avoid. Otherwise, that will come to us also. So those who really want the service of Krishna and their surrender to him, then Krishna will reveal to them which association is beneficial and what we have to if there is some cheating going on. Hence, devotion of a pure devotee with delightful relation, which gives satisfaction to the object of worship, cannot be against the purpose of devotion. Our Gurudev also used to give that example during Kartik. One Brajabasi was cooking daily for Krishna breakfast and what he will take with him for lunch. Then one day he wake, woke up late, so he was in hurry and he would cook with that same twig as he would uh, brush his teeth with another side. He would, so this is very impure. Even if you touch your lips, you have to wash your hand. You cannot cook with such hand. What to speak of brushing your teeth and with another. So he was doing because he was in hurry. But another one devotee from South India, he could not understand. So he started to rebuke him. You are committing offense. How you can cook? And with this tweak, then that devotee became afraid and then he stopped and then he went to take bath and fresh cloth and sitting and Jayadvani and Pranamantra and Tilak and Sandhya and everything. Then it went very long and he was cooking then very late that was cooked and he offered to Krishna. Then Krishna appeared to that devotee, another devotee, and he told him, why you are doing this? I have to go to forest after milking cows in the morning and I have to take my lunch with, with me there. That devotee knows this. He was serving me according to time, uh, all this. So you don't disturb him. Today I, I was very late because I, I did not get the uh, lunch, so I was very late. It is not good. You, you go out from Brindavan, you go to South India and worship there in Oven Reverence. So Krishna was not satisfied with that devotee because this devotee was doing for his satisfaction and he's really on Raga Mark. Really he's on Raga Mark. He wanted to serve Krishna according to Lila because he had that relation and really has that spontaneous love. So Krishna was not happy with that, but he was happy with this one. But if we are not on Raga Mark and out of laziness or out of ignorance or out of something, we don't want to follow the rules and regulations of Vaidhi Bhakti, imitate that we are on Raga, then we cannot progress in devotion. We will be deprived. So, when one has that, 
he satisfying Krishna. Although outwardly it may sometimes seem it is against. We can renounce everything, but it is very difficult to give up desire for name and fame. Here, other thing means desire for sex, relation, enjoyment, and accumulation of much money. These things are relatively easier to give up these desires than desire for name and fame, for prestige, for position, for this. Very difficult. The wise votary who wants development of pure devotion must be very careful in regard to this. Devotary means one who is practitioner, aspirant, one who took a vow to worship Krishna, votary. Devotary who wants Raga Bhakti should do Harinam, means chanting of holy name. Giving up all ulterior desires in the morning, midnight, midday, and in the evening. That is to say, always. We have to give up other desires. With this devoutness, when the said votary performs kirtan and smaran, he will get grace of Krishna soon and will be able to get the highest objective, means Krishna Prema, by which he will be actually emancipated from all attachments. Gyanis, they also want to be detached from all attachments, but they, that seed is not removed. Seed, when a next opportunity will come, they will again want. But devotee is engaged in the service of Krishna, that is why he has no attachment to non-eternal things. The aspirant should utter the name of Krishna in the company of bona fide sadhus with firm faith. Then all ulterior desires will be removed and he will get permanent fixation of the mind to the object of worship, that is nishta. Constancy and no deviation of mind. Because already he subdued all those anarthas, so they are not attracting him and not disturbing him, not obstructing him. He is fully, all the time, 24 hours, engaged in the service of Krishna, knowing his eternal relation with him. We are to think, yes, then this is already for Kartik, so in this way we have to chant Harinam and give up all Anarthas, of which name and fame is most difficult. So, in Sri Bhajan Rahasya, Srila Bhaktiv Notakur, in the second period, he explained there are four categories of Anarthas. Two days back, Sri Devi Radhika was asking, how do we know whether I crossed Anartha Nivriti? First, we have to know what are the anarthas? Then I can know whether I am uh, desiring that or influenced by that. Or then first we have to know. So Bhakti Thakur explained that there are four types of anarthas. Uh, Swarup Brahm. Asatrishna, Hridourbalya, Aparat. Sarubram means misconception of self, who I am. I think I'm this body, I am Slovenian, I am Indian, I am all this. This is Sarubram. Mistake. And when I am misidentifying myself with matter, then Naturally, as a consequence, Asat Trishna is there. Thirst for non-eternal things. Desire for non-eternal things. And Hridourbalya, weakness of heart. And Aparati. 
I will commit offenses. So these are four types of anarthas, which a conditioned soul has, but they are further uh, described by Shila Bhakti Thakur. Anartha binashta hoi Krishna prem pole. When all anarthas are removed, then one can only get Krishna prema. So four kinds. This which I told. Saru Brahma Satrishna Prathita. Then Saru Brahm is also of four types. Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying, the conditioned living entity is subject to four kinds of brahm, means mistake or illusion. Svatatve, Paratatva brahm, Sadhya Sadhana Tattva brahm, and Bhajan Birodi Bishoy brahm. Means, who I am, mistake in there. Who is the ultimate reality or object to worship, Paratatva? Who is he? Tattva, I don't know. And I don't know what is the ultimate goal of life, sadhya, and what is the process to attain it. And what is what are the obstacles in that sadhana? All this we don't know, or we are committing mistakes. So that is all Surubram of four types. Then asa trishna means desire for non-eternal things, also of four types. Desire for objects of this material world, desire for heavenly pleasures like those of Svarga, desire for mystic powers, and desire for liberation. And aparat are also of four types offenses to Krishna's name, Nam Aparat, offenses to Krishna's Diti Forum, Seva Aparat, offenses to that which belongs to Krishna, Tadia, Tadia means that which paraphernalia of Krishna, or in other words, to Giriraj, Govardhan, Ganga, Jamuna, the Dham or the lotus feet of the devotees, or Bhagavatam, Tulsi, all this, their Tadya. Or even Tadya is also holy days in relation to Krishna. If I am not careful to observe them, I am also committing offense. I forgot, oh, Janmashtami is today, I forgot. I did not follow fasting, I did not worship Krishna or Ekadashi like this. That is also apparent. Offenses to other living entities. This is the fourth one. Who are all infinitesimal particles of spirit belonging to Krishna. So Nama Paratar 10, Seva Paratar generally 32 or 33. Then Tadia we are criticizing devotees and stepping on the shadow of Tulsi. That is offense. And we are sitting above Bhagavatam or something, or devotee or deity. So many things uh, there. And Dham Aparat also, if you do sinful activities in Dham, that is Dham Aparat, not satisfying to Krishna. And also, Chit Kaneshucha, any cruel behavior to any living entity, maybe he is a devotee or not devotee, that doesn't matter. They all jivas, they belong to Krishna and Krishna has affection for all, like mother has affection for all her children. Someone may be criminal, but still mother will have affection. So she will not be pleased by any cruel behavior to anyone. 
that will also be counted as offense. That is why uh, Devaki was asking me about these offenses, Nama Aparat and Seva Aparat. We cannot be free of Aparat unless we practice this third verse of Shikastaka, where it is Amanina Manadena. Clude? I should not desire respect. When I desire respect, then I will not get it. I will be angry on that person. Why he is not respecting me? Why he is neglecting me? Why he is... I will be disturbed and I will criticize. I will want to take revenge or, or like this. I will do. Then how I can worship Krishna at that time? I am having that desire and not getting. I am furious, angry and disturbed. So that period is lost. You cannot serve Krishna. And Manadena, you have to give due respect to all. To all Jivas. Because Krishna is residing in their heart. They are uh, the resting place of Krishna. And also Krishna loves all Jivas. So you should not do any harmful and give due respect because they are they all have value. You should not exploit them or like this. Any jiva, not only devotees, any. So that is why Bhakti Thakur in that song he said, Sakale Samman Korite Shakate Deho Natajata Jai. Oh Gurudev, please give me this mercy that I will be able to give due respect to all. Then only I can chant Harinam blissfully because all offenses will be removed. So unless we remove, give up anarthas, other desires and offenses to Krishna and his uh, relate, related to him, we cannot chant pure Harinam and we will not get transcendental bliss from chanting and we cannot develop Krishna Prema. So that is why that is important. And then Hri Daur Balya is also of four kinds. Weakness of heart. One we know Arjuna in Gita. He played this pastime. When he saw those relatives, he became weak could not fight, could not do his duty. So four kinds, Hrida Urbalya, attachment to worthless objects, that is objects unrelated to Krishna, means to the service of Krishna, because everything is related to Krishna, but not related to the service of Krishna. That is, if you are attached to some sinful activities, that is due to weakness of heart. Hypocrisy and deceit. I am cheating, lying, outwardly showing one thing inside something else is cheating hypocrisy, then three, envy upon seeing the prosperity of others, jealous, you cannot tolerate that someone has something more or is more advanced or something, you cannot tolerate and you want to bring him down because you cannot tolerate his superior superiority. This is also due to weakness of heart and desire for prestige and position. That is Pratishta. So all these four. Yes, and here Bhakti Thakur is saying, Krishna Tara Vishoya Asakti Kutinati Paradroha Pratishtasha Eito Chariti Hridoi Dour Balya Boli Shastra Nirdharilo Chaya Ripu Chaya Urmi Ihate Janmilo Joto Din Esop Anarta Nahi Chare Toto Din Bhokti Lata Kobu Nahi Bade 
body. So also he is mentioning Bhaktivinoda Thakur, these six enemies, last anger, greed, envy, all these are their enemies. So Joto Din Esop Anartha Nahichare, as until you don't give up these anarthas. Toto din, up to that point, Pakti Lata, that creeper of devotion, cannot grow. So both we have to simultaneously practice, engaging ourselves in the service of Krishna under the guidance of Guru and not uh, fulfilling those other desires and giving up those desires and be careful not to commit offenses to these all types of offenses are there. So then she's giving some many verses. Uh, and from Upadeshamrita. Then because they were always asking. Then in the text 23 of second chapter of Bhajan Rahasya, Bhakti Muntakur says this, the 10 kinds of offense to the holy name which should be given up without fail are described in Padma Puran. That Satang Nimna Namna Paranamitana te. Those uh, I read in Bengali, it is in short. Sadhu another are Onya Isha Gyan, Guru Ke Avagya, Nam Shastre Apaman, Name Artavat, Nam Bole Papan Data, Anya Shuba Karma Soho Namer Samata, Shraddha Hine Nam Dan, Joro Sakti Krome, Mahatmya Janya Name Shraddha Nahi Brome, Ei Dosh Aparat, Jotne Porihari, Hori name koro bhai bhajana chaturi. So in short, we should not disrespect or criticize devotees. First offense, and this is very serious offense. Then if you think Shiva and other demigods, they are independent gods, that is offense to holy name, because that is ignorance. Shiva is dearest servant of Krishna not uh, independent some another god on your an isha gyan so we should also not disrespect demigods we should not worship them as if they are supreme but also not criticize disrespect we should respect them as devotees and also another is if by material intellect you think because we have such experience in this world, the word water, sound, water is different from the thing, water. If you speak water, 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 you cannot quench your thirst. If you speak fire, 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 your tongue will not be burned because fire word and fire, they are different things. So we have this experience. But if based on this worldly experience, we try to think that the name and form and attributes and pastimes of Krishna are also like that, separate, then we are committing offense. They are one. They are non different from each other. But they are self effulgent. We cannot realize that unless through service. But if we have such conception, that is offense to holy name have to give up. Krishna and Krishna's name are non-different, all-powerful. Then third offense is to disregard Guru, thinking him to be ordinary human being. Bonafide Guru is personal associate of Krishna, his dearest servant, so we should not disrespect him, thinking or envy him or thinking he is some human being, little more intelligent maybe some psychological his do, but we, we did not understand what is Guru Tattva. So we have to learn who is Guru 
and give proper respect and we should not disobey because Guru's orders are always given. He's always engaging us in the service of Krishna. There is no any other target. So disobeying that means we are not accepting the service of Krishna. So that is because we are servant of the servant of Krishna. We are not direct servant. We need the grace of personal associates of Krishna to get the service of Krishna. So if, if we disobey them, then we cannot satisfy Krishna. We will uh, do offense amidst this. Nam Shastra Paman, that you criticize or disrespect those Shastras which speak the glories of Holy Name. And another, this is generally given such explanation, Bishwana Chakura Thakur in Madhurja Kadambini, he told, even if you criticize Karma Shastra and Jnana Shastra, saying out of false pride, as like I am a devotee, but Karma and Jnana, there is no devotion there, so that is all useless. If you criticize in this way, you will also commit uh, this Shastra Ninda. Uh, Shastra. Shruti Shastra Nindana, yes. Because karma, there is some devotion there. Those who are wanting material benefits, but they are accepting regulation of Shastra. Shastra is not different from Krishna, so they are accepting. So some surrender, some devotion is there, and that will purify them. And in Jnana also, there is some devotion, and they are meant to gradually bring one to devotion. So we should not say that is all totally useless. That will also be offense to Shastra because Shastra is one, but prescribing for different levels of qualification, how they will gradually get. But if devotion is available, then that person who is encouraging devotion and is offering devotion, bona fide, pure devotee, he will say, don't follow karma and gyan. That is not good. Because now you, you, you have to accept this in that sense. But he's not absolutely criticizing or like this. But he will say, don't follow that. That is not good. Because now you, you have to accept this. So accepting that is not good. So there Vishnu Chakra Thakur told by the how you can remove that offense, you have to learn from a pure devotee about Shastra. Then you should have proper respect for all Shastra. Then uh, you will remove that offense. And Name Artavat, if you, inter if you try to, by your imagination, give some explanation of the Holy Name, not that which is self-effulgent revealed by Shastra or by pure devotee, but by your imagination you will interpret or translate or give some. That is also offense to the name. Some wrong explanation you will give that is offense. It will not please Harina. It will not please him. And if you think it is stated in Shastra, if one will chant holy name, then all his sins will be destroyed. So then I think, oh, very good. So I will do sins during daytime. And in the evening, I will little chant Harinam and everything will be destroyed. If intentionally you are doing this, then that is Nama Parat. And you will not get destruction of sins because you are doing Nama Parat. Ajamil got because he had no any Nama Aparat. Vishnu or Vaishnava, he did not have. That is why by Nama Bas he was rescued for sins. This. But if was someone intentionally trying to use holy name for his own material uh, purpose, selfish, then that is disrespect to the name. It is not service of holy name. Then, if one thinks 
in Shastra it is said you should give in charity. You should go to holy place and take bath there in that river. All your sins will be removed. And you should do this yagya and all this. So many things prescribed. So chanting Harinam is also like that. One pious activity. That is also Nama Parad. Because chanting Harinam for Krishna's satisfaction is pure devotion. It is not like other pious activities. It's not equal. And if someone has this thinking of they are equal, then he will not give proper attention to Harinam. That is why Bhaktivinoda Thakurin, Harinam Chintamani, he uh, divided this into two. One is to be inattentive while chanting. But when will one be inattentive? When one will not give attention to Harinam? Because he will give attention to other things, either other desires, or he thinks I have to do this and uh, so many pious and all this I have to do. So he will not give attention to Harinam. So that will also be offense. And another offense is if one will give Harinam initiation, he will instruct him in the chanting of Harinam, who has no firm faith in Krishna, that he is Supreme Lord, we are his eternal servants. By serving Krishna, you serve all. Without serving him, you cannot do any good activity. If this firm faith is not awakened in that, Jiva, you should not give him Harinam initiation out of greed for making more disciples or uh, for money, for name it for, or you will, you will not prescribe those which are in the Shastra, like what is to be accepted for the service of Krishna and what is not. One time it happened, one person, he came to our Gurudev and he said, I saw your advertisement in newspaper that you came to this town. So we are all very much attracted with her. So in that and that places, those villages, they will all become your disciples. All. Then Parangule was surprised. Then he said, but there are some rules to be followed. Then that person, no, no, don't speak about this. Don't speak about this to them. Then Paranguri said, how I can then give them? It is in Shastra, Krishna is accepting these services and there are certain things which are prohibited. So one cannot do those things. How I can instruct devotion to Krishna if I am not to tell what is this pleasing to Krishna? They will eat meat, they will offer maybe onion, garlic to Krishna. So how, if I don't explain that to them, then how I can initiate them into the service of Krishna? This is not like increasing disciples. It's not for this purpose. A real devotee is a servant of Krishna. His target is only service of Krishna and he is trying to inspire jivas to serve Krishna and those jivas who become uh, qualified, they awaken faith, then he will engage them in the service of Krishna, but giving all instructions of Krishna. Otherwise, that will not be initiation and that is not actual. So if one out of greed for more disciples will give to unfaithful or those who don't want to follow the instructions of Krishna, then he will commit Nama Prat, he will fall down. And even after hearing the glory of devotion to Krishna and chanting his name, if one got that Harinam and heard glories and everything, and he is still maintaining attachment to non-eternal things. He is not giving up 
an artist and desires, but keeping, thinking, no, no problem, that will also be Nama Parat. There may be some weaknesses, but we should not approve of that. We should condemn and we should try to give up, but not keep intentionally. Then we cannot progress in bhajan. So this Eidosha Paranjatne Porihari, you have to be careful to give them up and then you, you will chant Harinam and your bhajan will become uh, will become uh, chaturi, you will become expert in your bhajan when you give up these offenses. And then Devaki was also asking me about seva aparadas. There you will find in Harinam Chintamani, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Haridas Thakur, then Haridas Thakur said, I am not engaged in the service of deity. So, uh, but since you are ordering me, I will tell what is there in Shastra about Seva Aparat. One should not enter the temple of the deity in a car or palanquin or wearing shoes on the feet. You have to humbly come, not with pomp. He is God. You are his servant. So we choose and this. One should not fail to observe the various festivals for the pleasure of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, such as Janmashtami, Ratha Yatra, Ekadashi, and all this. One should not fail to bow down before the deity. One should not enter the temple to worship the Lord without having washed one's hands and feet after eating and in any contaminated state. According to Vedic scripture, the explanation, according to Vedic scripture, if someone dies in the family, the whole family becomes contaminated for some time, according to its status. For example, if the family is Brahmana, their contamination period is 12 days. For the Kshatriyas and Vaishyas, it is 15 days. And for Shudras, 30 days. So, uh, in contaminated state, you should not enter into temple. With unwashed hands and dirty cloth. So that Pujari told me in Mayapur, I just touched the Prasad. And with that, and I touched my cloth. He said, now with this cloth you cannot enter. It was not Uchishta, Remnantana, only Prasad. I touched my dhoti. He said, now you cannot enter into the altar for worship. Uh, then, one should not offer obeisance with one hand or without hand or uh, so many things. Like this, like Pralad Maharaj did or like this? These two are in Shastra. Not so many different things. You have to pray, bow down. And not with one hand. One hand holding mobile and with one hand uh, and head, that is also disrespectful. One should not offer, no, one should not wander in front of the deity of Shri Krishna. One should not spread his legs before the deity. One should not sit before the deity holding the ankles, elbows or knees with one's hands. Uh, one should not lie down before the deity, Krishna. One should not eat before the deity. One should never speak a lie before the deity. That is why we heard in Chaitanya Charitamrita that the young Brahmin said to old Brahmin, if there will be no witness, then they will not believe. So you have to say this in front of deity. You will have to promise what you said and he will be the witness. Because in front of the deity you should not lie. 
Anyhow, never we should lie, but especially not in front of Diti, that will be displeasing to Diti. One should not talk very loudly before the Diti. One should not discuss ordinary mundane subject matters before the Diti. One should not cry or howl before the Diti, that is out of some material emotion. Oh, my son died. Ah, that, that is not allowed. Warning. You can cry out of devotion to Krishna, but not some material sentimentalism. You have to go a little further there. Not in front of Diti or howl. <clears throat> One should not quarrel or fight before the Diti. One should not chastise anyone before the Diti. One should not bless anyone before the Diti. One should not speak very harshly to others before the Diti. One should not wear a fur blanket while worshipping the Diti because those particles will, will go and that is impure. Some hairs and this will go, it will contaminate. One should not eulogize or praise anyone else before the Diti. One should not speak any ill about others before the Diti. One should not call ill names before the Diti. One should not pass air before the Diti. One should not fail to worship the Diti according to one's means. I am very rich, but I give like one something to Krishna, one low class rice. That is not proper. If one is capable, he or she should not spend miserly for performing worship or observing the Lord's festivals. By serving Krishna, you will not lose, you will gain. Krishna is maintainer, Krishna is uh, protector. One should not eat anything which is not offered first to Shri Krishna. One should not fail to offer fresh fruit and grains to Shri Krishna according to the season. No one should be offered any foodstuff unless it is first offered to the deity. The first portion of all the items should be offered to the Lord before offering to others. When it is prasad, then you can give that. One should not sit with his back toward the deity. One should not pay obeisance to others in front of the deity. One should not offer obeisances silently to the spiritual master. Or in other words, one should recite aloud the prayers to the spiritual master. One should not praise himself before the spiritual master. One should not deride the demigods. This we heard before. And in some Shastra it is 33 or some more also in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu you will find. So, uh, we have to engage in the service of Krishna as per order of Guru, positive, and also be careful to not commit those activities which are displeasing to Krishna and his devotees and to name. When we practice this, then we can uh, come to the level of constant worship of Krishna, Nishta, and then Prema will go, will come further. But if we don't give up these things, or if we think this is not important, this is actually, why, what this, love, love, but one who has love for Krishna, he will do those things which are for the satisfaction of Krishna 
and he will give up those activities which are not pleasing to Krishna. And it is happening on Vaidhi platform. We are to be taught by bona fide guru. These are the services, these are the offenses. You have to be careful. And it is not that it is only in Vaidhi mark. It is in Raga mark also. And it is not only in Raga mark, it is you will find in Radharani also. Highest devotee. Now during Kartik Brata we will hear when Krishna does not wake up. Radharani does not want to push Krishna to wake up. Because he will be disturbed. He will not be pleased. So Radharani is also always thinking what is for the satisfaction of Krishna and what I should not do to this place. So it is everywhere going on. So we should not neglect this. On the platform, which we are now, we have to be taught by Guru and then we have to sincerely practice this. Both what is for the satisfaction of Krishna and which things we should give up which are not for the satisfaction of Krishna. Otherwise, we cannot progress. Like in business, if you have more expenditure than uh, that earning, then you will not get any profit in the end of the month. No profit. Like that, we cannot progress if we are not careful to give up anarthas, aparadas, even while engaging so much in the service, but if we, if we at the same time do all those activities, then we cannot progress in devotion. Because devotion means to please Krishna and not to displease Him. So both are important. In Vaidhi Mark and in Raga Mark also. Like that Biraja, she was doing service of Krishna, but not under the guidance of Radharani. So that is not good. And cowherd boys also, they don't want to do something which is not this, which is displeasing to Krishna. Everyone. It is both there. So tomorrow we hear about Madhva Charjo and that from uh, Lanka Bijai. If there will be some more time or something, then we can maybe further something about Kartik Brata. Then on Thursday we will start.